So now we've come to grinding the Mifer beds themselves. Seven all together. As you can see here, we used the Thule uh, grinder, which has a large capacity, stroke length of uh, over one meter. And the first thing to do was uh, to grind the magnet. Uh, Chris Robin here, the owner, also then uses the manual oil pump. There's a big magnet table also covering uh, the entire length of almost stroke in the S. While we have the bed up for mounting, you see that it's firmly mounted. And uh, there we use this setup to grind the, the feet first. And uh, for those of you that uh, thinks that this is uh, producing a low of bow in the middle or whatever, it's not because the the wear pattern has left the ridge, so to speak, covering the entire length. And then we flipped the bed over and mounted it on the feet and ground the top flat sections of the bed in one operation. It's by no means magical, but it's quite intriguing to see also how the effect so wear then disappears. If you see the middle section there not covered yet. This will come in when we adjust the wheel lower. And, uh, I think on this bed we took off about eight hundreds of a millimeter, which, which is, uh, well, it's in the middle of, of the seven beds. I think we they ranged from somewhat like almost two tenths of a millimeter and down to three four so it's coming along nicely an eight hundredths of a millimeter that corresponds to what I measured also I made test protocols for the beds this is the specimen we are grinding here the top drawing shows the um, bed from the uh, top, which uh, if you look closer, you can see it says minus four for where the tailstock has been riding. We eventually took off eight hundredths of a millimeter. It also says minus 10, where you have a bow in from when uh, the saddle has been riding back and forth. The middle drawing shows the uh, width of the, of the bed. And that uh, lowermost shows the thickness of the uh, shares. And uh, this was in the middle range. We had the uh, bed that was uh, only worn three hundredths of a millimeter, and then the worst one almost twenty or two tenths of a millimeter, which actually was the newest one. using the whole length of these uh, strips and then uh, the bed bolted to them meant that we had a lot more magnets in place or in, in use and then much sturdier and this proved to be a very good setup. Uh, if you wonder about using the sides of the stone I think it was Don Bailing at Suburban Tools who also did that with in some video that's proved to be a no-brainer also that functioned good which I will show when next video will show the results of the grinding and the measurements thereafter so very nice indeed they look really nice now so um, 
leave it there. So this is the first bed, just out of grinding. Some stripes, not much really in the depth uh, difference, but I decided to stone it a little bit. And the stripes disappears, at least uh, comes in. And uh, altogether it's within flatness of one, I think, one thousandth of a millimeter, maybe two. So very hard to measure any real difference and it's, it serves the purpose very nice. Looks good, I think. We had a scrape fest weekend, meeting up with some guys and then uh, learning a little bit how to scrape the Richard King way. And then we used this bed as an example of how bad where it can get. <laughs> and I also had the chance to, to do the cross slides while I was at Chris Robbins' place. And one of them being higher than the other can be seen. The grinder will now move to the next section and then you see sparks flying here. So afterwards they were all of equal height. So very nice indeed this also. Hey, but what about the undersides? I know that some will ask. Yes, as evident from the use of this grinder, it is not possible to grind the undersides of the flat base. So this will have to be done by scraping. Uh, actually, there was not much wear. I mean, most of the wear was on the top side, so um, not much much scraping to be done either. A little bit surprising, but that's, that's how it turned out. So, next video.